humility. In 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, the Apostle Paul likens the Christian life to a race in which runners compete to win the prize. They strive and they struggle for the prize. And toward that goal, they subject their bodies to a training regimen. And they humble themselves and they put their bodies through the struggle because they know that it is through that practice that they will have success, that they will reach their goal. And perhaps it is that they take the counsel of a trainer or a coach who has experience and knowledge of the task. And even though they can't see exactly how, what the coach or that trainer is offering them will do for them, they follow it, trusting in the, the knowledge of the coach. Now in Mark 1, 40 through 45, our gospel reading for this week, we have a, a different goal than an athletic competition or a race, but we have a goal of healing in that there is a, a man who is stricken by a dreaded skin disease, leprosy, who comes to Jesus and he throws himself at Jesus's feet. He humbles himself before Jesus, kneeling and says to Jesus, if you will, or if you choose, or if you wish, you are able, you have the power, you can make me clean. And Jesus says, I do choose, be made clean. And the leprosy immediately leaves the man and he is cleansed. And so it was through this man's expression of confidence in God's presence in Jesus, it was in this man's humility before God that he had the courage to break his isolation and he found healing through Jesus, through the one who could make him clean. And even though Jesus was not an authorized priest, he was not someone who belonged to um, the Levites or was not from Aaron's line, yet this man came to him because he knew that Jesus could do something for him like the priests could do. He could cleanse and he could also do something that the priests could not do, but that only God could do. He could heal a man of his leprosy. Now, 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 14 is also a healing story about a man who has leprosy. And this man is a great military commander of the king of Aram, which was an enemy of Israel at that time. And the man's name was Naaman. And even though Naaman was, as the text says, a great man, a man of high honor, he had leprosy. And it was that there was um, one time when Aram had gone into Israel conducting raids, they took a girl from Israel captive. And this girl served Naaman's wife. And the text says that this was a young girl. And it also says that she was a small young girl. So, or a, she could have been a small or little or perhaps insignificant young girl. But it turns out that 
she knows something that Naaman does not know. She knows that there is a cure for his leprosy. And so she says, oh, if my Lord, oh, if Naaman, that is this earthly master, could go to the prophet who is in Israel, that prophet, he would, would heal Naaman of his leprosy. And so it is that this young woman, this girl by human standards who is little and insignificant, knows the cure for the leprosy of this great man, this mighty man, this esteemed man by worldly standards. And so Naaman goes to Israel and long story short, he finds the man of God, the prophet Elisha, whose name means my God is salvation, whose name means my God is healing. He finds Elisha, and through the intervention now also of some of Naaman's servants, just at the time when Naaman is upset by the particular response that Elisha gives him and doesn't want to follow through on the regimen that Elisha prescribes for him, just at that time, some other servants impress upon Naaman to follow the words of the prophet. And he goes to the River Jordan and he dips himself in the River Jordan seven times according to the word of God through the prophet. And then the text says, his flesh became like that of a young man. His flesh was restored to that like the flesh of a young man, a, a, and then a small and little or insignificant young man at the end of the story. So the movement of this healing story is that through, through the knowledge about God's healing power, through a small and little and by worldly standards insignificant young woman, through that knowledge, Naaman, this great military commander, at the end of the story has become like a young insignificant boy. That is like a young man who is now childlike in his faith, who has become a person of true humility, who acknowledges that there is one greater than him, indeed that there, there is a God who heals, who in fact, as we read beyond this story, acknowledges that Elisha's God, who is healing and who is salvation, is now also his God, is also Naaman's God. And he puts his trust and his faith, he becomes like a child and he puts his trust and his faith in the God of Israel. And so Naaman was also like that person that David describes in Psalm 30. In fact, David is speaking of himself, David, who was, who was an Israelite military commander who became king. And David said, in, he said, in, in my prosperity, David says, reflecting on himself, I said, I shall never be moved. But then David says, I, but, but, but I, I must acknowledge that that it was by God's grace that I came into any authority that I have. And then when God hid his face from me, I was dismayed. And so David also says, but I cried to the Lord and he healed me. So it is through our humility, our acknowledgement of God's provision for healing for us, that God even grants to us through others, no matter how small or insignificant they may seem in the eyes of the world, 
It is through that kind of humility that God's healing comes to us. God provides healing through humility. Amen.